Taiwan, a country I'm proud to say I'm from, in my career as a media entrepreneur. I've spoken to movers and shakers here who make global headlines. But what I'm most excited about are the up and coming forces of my generation. They're young, they're creative, they dare to defy the status quo. Follow me as I meet emerging leaders of Taiwan who lift us, who inspire us, who are changing the world, starting in Taiwan. This is Game Changers with Emily Waiwu. Today, we speak to a pair of musicians. They're twin brothers, and they represent fresh faces of percussion in the world music stage. They're called Twin Cushion. Twin Cushions are brothers Ren Ting and Ren Yu. They started playing in their father's metal factory in Yilan on the eastern coast of Taiwan. And today, they perform a wide variety of types of music, from Taiwanese folk music to Western classical numbers and works by new contemporary composers and even electro music. They are the official Yamaha musicians in Europe, and they've toured across Europe and Asia. And in fact, they just came back from a tour to the US. They've won multiple global competitions, and in 2018, they played at the Carnegie Hall in New York. And let's welcome our game changer today, Twin Cushion, brothers Ren Ting and Ren Yu. Hi, Emily. Hey, welcome. Nice to see you. Good nice to, to see have you. you. Yeah, yeah. You just came back from the States. Uh, you performed six different concerts in four different cities. Yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, we, we have never been treated like that. Like before this tour, every tour was organized most of by our own. And this time was invited by the US Department of State. Before we play a lot in a lot of like percussion festival yes. or, you know, play for the like professional audience. So this time is uh, our first time to play for the general or ordinary audience, audience in US. And also, it's our first time to play in the Kennedy Center. Yeah, oh, so, wow. yeah the one it's of kind the of most... like an artist or musician dream. Yeah, for us. Yeah, how was it? It was awesome. Yeah, I mean, everything is so professional. The people and the facility. We play in the stage called Millennium uh, Stage, and it was played on a very long foyer. Even you can place the uh, Washington Monument. In, in the foyer, in the hall, so yeah. <laughs> imagine how long it is. So when we play, go out, when we went out to the stage, thousands of people waiting there for us. And after the concert, people are just so excited, like they have never seen this kind of percussion show before. Yeah. So for us, this is a, a milestone and also a very exciting experience. And we have four stops. The first one is Washington DC and New York City and two cities in Washington state. And one is called Yakima and one is called Winachi. I don't know if you have heard of them <laughs> before. Yeah. But it was truly an amazing experience, like big city and also small towns. Yeah, different vibes, different people, but very um, fruitful. Yeah. That is so cool to hear. I mean, compare that with when you played at the Carnegie Hall in 2018, right? And that was at a smaller recital hall, right. yeah. 268 seats, yes. which is a really exciting stage for any up and coming uh, musicians. Yeah, we, uh, we won a competition, a chamber music competition, and they invited us to play in Carnegie Hall. Yeah. I remember that day was very, uh, when I walk beside uh, the, the backstage, I see many great artists' photo on the wall, and just feel like, wow, I'm proud of them and how many efforts people make and to to play here. So, yeah, it's just for us, we made a lot of effort and practice and practice, and finally we were there. So it was very uh, unforgettable. Yeah, moment. there's a sentence. So if how can you get into the Carnegie Hall? Just practice and practice and practice <laughs> yeah so it's really like meaningful for us to play in the Carnegie Hall I remember that time we uh, borrowed a marimba from a from friend a in, in New York marimbas are the, the big I mean they're like desk size yeah like this yeah it's like a car had four wheels but cannot drive you know <laughs> yeah yeah so we will need to uh, rent it in New York City and brought the marimba to the backstage and put it on the stage. <laughs> and some more the, the marimba as well. Right. They done everything right. for us. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a VIP yeah. this time. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. luxury. Yeah. I mean, speaking of the marimbas, there was one um, I saw in one of your music videos. You were in a factory, kind of an old factory. It's very dusty. Yeah. 
it's dramatic lighting, low lighting, and the both of you, you're on a marimba each, right. and you're playing your hearts out. And it, it's a really cool clip. It looks very sci-fi-y. You're playing a song that's a new composition by a young Polish composer. Yeah. Yeah, tell me about that piece because it, it was really so new and fresh. Um, did that that particular style, did it have anything to do with the fact that you were trained at the Royal Danish Academy of Music where there's a bit of other Euro kind of Northern European um, influence? Because we are classical trained percussionists, so most of the program we learn is classical, like from Bach and uh, classical and also romantic, Chopin. So we did a lot of arrangements from classical world to percussion. But when we discover our program, we think we haven't played electronics music before. So it was an interesting story. We were a play in Switzerland a few years ago, and because Switzerland is so expensive, so we stayed at a hostel mm -hmm. and decided to cook there. And when we were in the kitchen, we found there's a white tall guy just cooking beside us. And he's, he's not another backpacker. He is the, one of the leading composer and percussionists, Thomas Skolinski. So we just coincidentally met him in the kitchen. So we quickly introduced ourselves and we were talking about percussion, culture, and music. And, and some, you know, food like we, from Pol Poland and We Taiwan. even exchanged food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just asked Thomas if he could roll the piece for us. Uh -huh. And guess what? He said yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So next time I try to cook with a stranger in the and you will magically something will happen. <laughs> yeah, you never know who you're going to meet at a hostel. Right. Um, I think in, in Mandarin we would probably would say that that's Hanyo Yuan Fen, right? Is. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's yeah. not really an English equivalent to that. It's no. just you have a fate to meet at some point in your it's life. Kind of like a destiny or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We know his music before so much, and so we're very excited to meet him. How do you balance between how much um, modern music to, to make versus how much um, classical music to perform? Uh, I think uh, about one third is per classical, okay. and one third is comp contemporary. And one third is something represent who we are, like Taiwanese folk music or the music composed by Taiwanese composers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So as a musician, sometimes we think uh, we cannot, you know, put all the repertoire like contemporary or classical. We need to think, of, you know, the audience side. Like, did they get bored or something? <laughs> <laughs> we need to organize the repertoire or in the, the concert like more like a show. Show. Yeah. Like, yeah. We like the audience to have an overall experience, not just in one genre, but in the whole picture of percussion and our background as well. You two grew up in Ilan, mm -hmm. um, where your father owned a metal factory. Yeah. This is where you learned to play the percussion. You like banging, and then your parents said, you know what, go away. Go, go to the shed and, and bang on whatever you want. Right. And that turned out to be kind of what you're known now that became your profession. Yeah, yeah, I would say that it's kind of an inspiration for us because you know when we were babies, we hear a lot of metal sound in our home, yeah. like you know Massive. smashed metal, smashed iron. It's kind of like a rhythm, but it sounds like noise. <laughs> as Could well. be noise, but yeah. So, but you can say that we're our lullaby, you know, when we were a baby. Yeah. Yeah, and having twins could be a double trouble for our parents. Oh, <laughs> we yeah. like to make sound like a sofa or even the a cabinet or a vase. So we broke many in the furniture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So our parents just signed, up, signed us up to the percussion class mm -hmm. lesson. And we started our percussion journey there. We found that it was very diverse, the sound wise and also the instrument wise. We just fall in love with percussion and just play till today. Yeah. Right, your parents said, yeah, go go away. Don't break any more <laughs> furniture in the house. No, no, yeah, save the furniture <laughs> eventually. <laughs> but you didn't always play together. For a long time, you were playing solo as one brother, another brother. How did you decide that you need to be playing together? Yeah, and we are competitive very much. <laughs> yeah. You're competitive against each other? Yeah. We are competitive as in the Taiwanese exam. Like there were very few positions, but we have two. <laughs> yeah. So we need we are we were competitors at that moment. Mm -hmm. I think the turning point is we saw a concert. Mm -hmm. And the concert is also played by a percussion duo. Okay. And they're from Israel. The whole concert was like 
holding the chair in the National Council Hall and like this, like we yeah. were riding on the race car because the energy they gave and the music uh, are so delicate and they play like everything perfectly. And there were two but playing like one. Yeah. So it was like, oh my God. A percussion duo can, can play like that. And they don't even, they are not brothers. They are not twins. <laughs> so yeah. we should use our uh, talent and Please. use I was going to say superpowers, but yeah. yeah. Power. <laughs> At that time, we was like, okay, this is the goal we would like to be. We want to play as a duo and to share our music and recognize by, by, by this genre. Did, was, did it click right away and you're no. telepathic somehow? Dad and I, we just set up our goal. We, we should do it like that, you know, yeah. <laughs> but we will never know if it will be succinct or not. Yeah. We think we are very glad we made the decision and we, we start to do it like from Taiwan and we also study in Denmark. And yeah. A lot of hard working practice all the yeah. day in the conservatory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How would you describe each other's music, music abilities? We are very different, actually. Yeah. 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 Like I like marimba most. Marimba is like piano in percussion field. So a lot of uh, melodies and more uh, emotional. And he- I think I like drum more. I more, like more rhythmic things. And you know, like crazy drumming, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. It fit my personality as well. Yeah. 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 So we will like uh, accompany each other. Like yeah. melody yeah. and with rhythm. Melody, rhythm, yeah. And we, we need to play both, of course. Oh, it's super cool. Well, let's take a break here. Um, and uh, when we come back, I want to talk more about your music influence and kind of um, the educational work that you've been doing. Because so far, I mean, you've been playing around the world, uh, definitely representing this, yes, fresh face, but just a new way for us to think about percussion. And um, when we hear the music, I mean, I actually listen to it when I um, when I'm working now, it's just such really fun melody and fun. There's like a lot of surprising beats that come along. It yeah. makes me really happy. So thank you. Hey, welcome back to Game Changers with Emily Y. Wu. This is where I sit down with some very cool young hip people in Taiwan who are doing amazing things in the world. Today, we've been sitting here with Twin Cushion. They're a pair of brothers, Ren Ting and Ren Yo, who is the fresh face of percussion in the global music scene. So what's the unlikeliest surface you've ever played on? I would say a bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, we before we go abroad, there's a uh, performance like invite us say, yeah, I mean, the performance topic so is about, you know, a bus or something like that. Can you play on the bus? Like, you can like improvise on that. So we just play yeah. on, the, you know, the, the side of bus and the wheel and the engine. <laughs> Combine like a show. We have a lot of commission. Uh -huh. And uh, for me, it was, uh, there's one time we play on blanket because there's uh, a, a blankets, blanket. like, blanket. Like, it's like when you go out to the bed and you have that blanket on your body. Uh -huh. It shows the, the, the old time of Taiwan. And so in the old time, people would use uh, ah, sticks so to hit the blanket and make the sound to make it dry. Right. And that moment, we need to play the blanket. But what? we couldn't make it sound. <laughs> so afterward, we put some like plastic inside. So when you hit it, it will have sound, but it's not by the blankets, we, it's we hit the plastic. So it was very uh, unforgettable experience. I think that one was in Ilan. Yeah. That is cool. so interesting. Like, like this? Could you do a little bit of a demo here? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. sure. You didn't play. Yeah. <laughs> no, but here's me. I knew I was, was mesmerized. Like, <laughs> no okay, one right. mesmerized. Super mesmerized. Um, that was so cool. Well, from this perspective, I it was really cool seeing you playing off of each other. You were noticing each other, how you were playing. And I guess since you've been playing together for so long, you know what's to come next. And then when you finish, kind of you can 
Yeah, right. naturally. Wow. When the when we was tour in the, this US tour, yeah. some of the menu they don't have drums. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we were thinking about, okay, what should we do? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just a conversation or something like that. And they say, can you play something? And it was, was like, like, we didn't have, there's we no don't drum. have instrument. <laughs> okay, maybe that chair. Yeah, so we yeah, put two yeah, chairs yeah. together and we go, we, got, we two just play chairs for them. Yeah. And they was like, wow. Next time we can play on chair. Now they chair have new is, instruments. Uh, yeah, chair is a musical instrument now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You played a bus. Uh, you played um, in Ilan with uh, blankets. blankets. You played in your father's um, metal factory, uh, but you've also played at the Kennedy Center, the Carnegie Hall, the Opera House in Taichung in Taiwan, yes. the National Museum in Taiwan, community centers, schools, Denmark, Switzerland, Japan. I keep mm. naming off of new places that you played. Where else have you not played that you really want to play in? <sighs> Very good question. <laughs> we haven't been to Africa yet. Yeah. I think the reason more or less is originally from there, like the human beings from there, and also, I mean, percussion, and the reason is from originally from the ceremony of the ritual, religious. So yeah, every time we saw the African people playing drums or all kind of things, it was, it was very contagious, like, it's very natural. So yeah, that's the next place I would like to do, <laughs> playing something, play music there or visit there. Yeah, yeah and also me too. South America, we haven't been there oh, yeah. yet. Okay. Yeah, a lot of good music from there, like tango or Latin music. Some, you know, like a lot yeah. of drum music from Cuba. African. Yeah. Cuban. yeah. Mm. So yeah, maybe that's the next Next destination. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Arctic. Oh. Mm. Oh, yeah. Some people even use ice for instruments. Oh yeah. But mm. I think it's very hot in Taiwan because it's very hot to warm <laughs> here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to ask you about how you teach students because you've done master classes at various places of the world. Texas, where this it's a cowboy state. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, in Nashville, Tennessee, which is home of the uh, American country music. Yeah but also in Poland, home of Chopin. Um, in all these places, when you do master classes, what do you tell students about how their relationship with their particular unique music cultures uh, could be? I found, I mean, students from everywhere, they have different backgrounds. In Spain, the students are very laid back and play music very relaxed, in a relaxed way, not like Taiwanese do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Polish students, they are very focused I think because of the background of education, they were very serious and very disciplined. I remember last time we played in, in Poland, there is a festival there. Mm -hmm. And we are thinking about, should we play some Chopin for them? You know, they are Polish, it's from there. Mm -hmm. And they are very picky about Chopin piece. And I remember that time we played an etude from Chopin, piano mm -hmm. etude. After we played, and some you know, Polish guy in the audience, they came to us say, Thank you for playing Chopin for us. It's really beautiful through your performance. I was like, okay, it's a it's really a pleasure. <laughs> it's a cheer for us. Like we are Taiwanese, wow. but we play Chopin, yeah. Polish music too. Yeah. Polish. Yeah. 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 And I think American students, they were very confident. They really can tell what they are going to play and what they like. And yeah, for I think the European or even. Uh, Asian students, we're more like, we just play and let you feel it. But when we tour in the university in, in the USA, I think that's the student, they are very knowing what they were doing. So that's impressed me a lot. Hmm. What about, um, come, uh, you know, the other way around, if there is a international musician who says, look, I want to take uh, Taiwanese folk music and uh, modernize it or, and adapt it into their own arrangements, which artists would you recommend them look to? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, many artists can represent different faces of Taiwan. Yeah. But for us, we, we would like to choose, every time we choose is uh, folk music, folk songs. Yeah. Like, which can really represent Taiwan. So if someone want to adapt Taiwanese music, of course, there's tons of selection. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's mm -hmm. folk music, mm -hmm. folk songs. Mm -hmm. We like transcribe one called T O O mm, yeah. got this guy and the other one is Tao Mea Lang Ge Gang, the grasshopper play trick on rooster.
we always play that at Encore uh, oh, okay. through our okay. performance, and people love it very much. <laughs> yeah, I, I always love hearing those. So what is next for you guys? Ah, uh, yeah, a little bit rest, a little bit holiday from yeah. the US tour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, we will go to Europe again okay. to record a new pieces. Yeah. New piece. Yeah. 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 We commissioned some European composer for us, like, yeah, we explore new music. Yeah, yeah it will yeah. be filmed in a Danish factory as well. Ah. Yeah, so very industrial place. Yeah. Okay, okay. We like industrial place <laughs> <laughs> very much. <laughs> yeah, and also we will go back to USA for the percussion convention. It's an annual convention, and all the percussionists will gather in together. So, very excited after pandemic because pandemic stopped everything. So. Yeah, we are very looking forward to it. Really exciting performances ahead and new, um, I think, innovations in music ahead for you guys. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let, we let you go back, there's a question that we ask everybody, which is, um, I think, out of your accomplishments so far, how much was given to you versus how much did you have to fight for? I mean, yeah, a lot of people see, yeah, we are quite successful for, for now. I think we do a lot of, like, hard working. Especially in Denmark, people would st stay there and study for three to four years. And people say, yeah, you went to Denmark, you should explore the city, explore the culture. Yeah, but at that time, we just, we need to practice a lot, then become an expert or become a professional. We wake up at, at seven or eight, then we go to the conservatory to play, practice, until the 10 o'clock mm -hmm. or at the midnight, and then we go back. So we do that day by day, until someone knows us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I think at the very beginning we just we don't know if we will make it or not. Mm -hmm. But we just do whatever, do, do the things we we like and we love, and keep doing that. And after a period, we were wow, we did uh, such an achievement, not just because of money or fame, but just the things something from here, and that's really push us and make us uh, input from whatever we do. Yeah, I think that's the thing about musicians is this amount of practice that goes into it. It is so much discipline, um, so much patience, so much honing of those skills. Um, and then when you do get on that stage, Kennedy, Carnegie, um, it is that that one shot, right? Yeah. I mean, you prepare so much time and just only one, one hour and one you time. just had one <laughs> chance. Very stressful, yeah. but also we need to enjoy every moment yeah. on the stage or off stage. Yeah. But so now when I, I think I think as a concert goer or watching your YouTube, right, it is such joy just listening to the music. So thank you for bringing music to us. Thank, thank you, Emily. Thank you. Thanks. And I'm really excited to see how much further you will go, um, a fresh face in the world of percussion, but also just representing Taiwan in this really yeah. cool way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we feel so proud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's all the time we have for today. If you're also a percussionist um, or you're an audience member, please do look up Twin Cushion. And as for me, Emily Wai Wu, you can find me on my socials. You've been watching Taiwan Plus. Follow and subscribe to all our shows and uh, look out for more emerging artists from Taiwan. See you next time.